hope you had a great new year. In today's video, we're going to be going over this 1977 Porsche 911S. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and check out the other air cool content. In this video, I'm going to be going over a few things that a newbie might have trouble with the first time they're checking out an air cool Porsche 911 or 912. If you actually know about these cars, drop a comment below on some experience that you learned over the years, maybe an embarrassing moment, tips and tricks when checking these things out. When you're checking out your first air cool 911 or 912, it's a good idea just to go all around the car, check out the exterior like a normal car. Make sure nothing's loose, nothing's out of place. Once you have a good idea that the body looks pretty fair, you don't see any major rust issues, you don't see anything that could kind of fall off on you while driving, you might get a chance to actually drive the car. A lot of air-cooled owners won't let any random Joe Schmo get in their car and take it for a spin. You kind of have to have some experience. But if you're taking it for a spin and you see that the gas level is low, you have to put some gas in that bad boy. First things first, you're gonna wanna go ahead and pull the gas knob. Once you pull it, it's gonna actuate and flip the lid open. You're gonna wanna go ahead and pull the material that's actually covering the gas fill lid. Once you pull it off the neck, you're gonna go ahead and enter fuel. Make sure everything is nice and tight before you close it back up. One of the most basic, basic things on checking out a car is checking the oil level. It's a little bit different on these cars. You might forget really quick that, yes, the engine is in the back. So instead of opening the hood and looking like a rookie, make sure you go back and open the deck lid. You do this by actually pulling the knob on the driver's side door sill and it opens the rear deck lid. Once you got the rear deck lid open, the oil fill neck is actually to the passenger side area of the car. You're gonna go ahead and unscrew the fill cap and you'll see the dipstick hiding a little bit towards the rear. Once you pull the dipstick and you take a look at it, do not be alarmed. There's probably no oil on it. The car has to be in the operating temperature for you to actually get any oil reading. If the car has been sitting a while or hasn't been started in a while, or you come and look at the car before it was ever started, it will not have an oil reading. Don't be alarmed. You can go ahead and crank it up, let it warm up, and then check the oil reading. Another good way to check if it has oil is to look underneath the back of the car. If there's some drops on the floor, you know you're good. You know what they say, if it's not leaking, there's probably nothing in it. Next up is the coolant level. You want to make sure that all your coolant levels are good before you go out and take this bad boy for a spin. You don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere and your temperature starts rising, the car gets hot, next thing you know, no, 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 there's no coolant in the car. This is an air-cooled car, guys. Make sure when you're checking it out, if a seller tells you, oh, you're going to check the coolant, then you don't go start checking for coolant. The seller of this car actually told me that joke and he said something about the coolant levels and I thought about it for a split second, but I didn't fall for it. So it's always good fun. Practical fun to kind of hear those jokes, but if you're aware of it, you won't fall for it. Oh, you're feeling good now. You know where the gas lid door is at. You know how to check the oil. You did your little checks. Time to fire old girl up. Seller hands you the keys. You're feeling a little excited. You look for that ignition. Oh wait, the ignition is on the left side. So the reason it's on the left side goes back into Porsche racing history. The drivers would actually save a split second having it on that side and being able to start the car and take off. I believe it's on the Le Mans races or maybe some other ones. I'm not 100% sure, that's always what I've heard. So quote me on it. So after that epic fail, hopefully the seller doesn't take the keys away from you from embarrassment. Pop that key into the ignition, turn it and listen to that six cylinder purr if it starts. When you're checking out an air-cooled 911, you better make sure to mention something about the door pin. So it's not just any other door handle. It's not any other door mechanism. You have to squeeze to release. You see that squeeze? So much people do one of these. No, no, no. You have to squeeze to release. So after you have squoze, listen. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. Do not open and close your door more than about 50 to 60 times a year because the mileage of these bad boys goes up so fast and if people know how much door pings that you actually have on your car, drops the value like crazy. Be sure to drop a like on this video because it's costing me a lot. So is there anything that you might notice on this side that you don't see on this side? There's no passenger side mirror. So it's not a standard thing on all of them, but Half the air cools that I've owned, they don't have a passenger side mirror. Back in the day, it's just not needed. You could always throw one in there, but my 912, this 911, and another 911 didn't have passenger side mirrors. I like it that way. It's sleek, and you don't even need that. You don't need to see nothing in the rear view because you're just, yum. 
So next up, we got the Fuchs. Some people call them Fuchs. Some people call them Fuchs. Some people call them, I'm not really sure what else you can call them, but rare wheels, cool wheels, pretty heavy wheels. These ones are fake. So these are replica Fuchs. They look good, they're super wide, but I took them off. They are not original Fuchs wheels. Be sure to keep an eye out and make sure that your Fuchs wheels that you're looking to purchase are not replicas and they're not fake but they are actually OEM and genuine Fook wheels. These are worth big, big money. Some of these Fook wheels, the sets are going for more than I paid for an actual air-cooled car. Crazy. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, every time a Fook wheel makes one full rotation, you lose 20 cents on the value of your car. So drive it very sparingly. So we made it to the booty of the car. This bad boy is called the Ducktail. You can call it your Duck Bill, Duck Billy, Spoiler. You can even call this the Hater Evaporator because once people pull up next to you and they see this, they know not to mess around. Another really famous deadlift for this car is called the Whale Tail. You guys probably know it from the 930 Turbo and other cars. It's pretty sweet, it looks like a whale's tail and a lot of people love it. This one is sweet, I actually have a whale's tail for this car but I'm gonna hold off for now. This is more my jam. Another good thing to note is the passenger side rear contains the oil filter, not underneath the cars like most of the time. Another thing to note is the spare tire is underneath the frunk. There she blows, it goes right there, snugged up next to the gas tank. So that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. A little fun, a little Porsche info, just messing around. Be sure to stay tuned for some more air-cooled Porsche content as well as S2000 content. Got a lot of stuff coming, got a new project coming. Got another new project coming, and I got a course to 86 we got to troubleshoot, and this bad boy we're gonna continue on. Be sure to drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll catch you guys next time. As always, be blessed and be superish. Make On to the booty of the car. This bad boy is called the Duck Bill. Duck spoiler. Duck tail. Duck 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 goose. Sheesh. <laughs> no, no, no. You.